Edo, no chof des podcast. Here we go. It's a, it's a review of the 3 0 win against Loxa. Three and easy. And we were at the top of the league, albeit briefly. My co host as ever, Roy No Chof des. I love the way they change your name now. Yeah, Roy No Chof des, man. <laughs> no Chof des, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, the, ga- the game yesterday was, uh, you know, not, not as easy as it seemed. This is a strange game because, you know, uh, the beginning, let's say like the first 15 minutes, I don't know if I can find the right word to describe how we approached the game. Was it cautious? Was it... Um, patient was it conservative but the first let's say quarter of, of an hour it seemed like a, a an evenly shared game like the possession was was shared evenly midfield you know we were cancelling each other out and uh, you know in, in, in fairness you know Docs has a good team and we're playing away uh, we had some trouble at home but, you know, after the first 15 minutes, uh, when Kusulo and Jordi started warming up and we started winning the midfield battle, and Loizzo and Asante started becoming a little bit more assertive, obviously the ball reached uh, to them. We became, uh, we, had, we were threatening them a lot. And, you know, the Nox um, had a player in the left wing. It was his first game and uh, he got substituted at the 35th minute because obviously by that time, you know, Asante, Ernest, he just, you know, ha- had the line on lock, like the mm. thing on lock. We were creating chance after chance, but, you know, uh, we just scored one goal. And obviously, like we said, and we're going to say a lot of more times, you know, when it's just one goal difference, a lapse of concentration or a mistake or whatever can happen. So it was a bit unfair uh, to end the first half with just one goal difference because it could have been two or three first half. Second half, again, the first 10, 12, 15 minutes seemed like uh, a repetition of the first half. Uh, Roxa had their only chance, which, you know, uh, Fabiano saved, great save, you know, ready at all times. And then Fodis came on and uh, he scored an early goal. Then we got the penalty. We we hit the post with uh, Lejac. So all in all, I think it was, you know, uh, a no chofters win, man. It was a no-nonsense win. Precisely, precisely. We, we, we came on and we're like, you know, we're not fucking about guys, you know. We've lost a lot of points against teams of that caliber. And, you know, we're not fucking about this time around. This is like a very general and, you know, epidermic way of uh, looking at the game. You know, I, I don't know what your thoughts are. Do you, you want to share your thoughts? Well, see, see, this is it. I mean, the first, as you said, the first 10, 15 minutes, it was a bit of a cagey game. But I think... We, we showed Voxa a lot of respect in the opening yeah. 10, 15 minutes because they, they are where they are because they deserve to be there. You know, they've had some very good victories this season. And again, they deserve the respect. Yeah, exactly. And we can't, we can't go into some of these games with, uh, you know, in second gear, then switch to third gear and then fourth. You know, yeah. in the space of a second, you, you, you've got to feel it. It's like a boxing match. You've got to feel each other out. You've got to yeah. spar for a bit. And I think that's what we were doing. We were sparring. But as the game grew, we were playing better. We are moving the ball quicker, moving the ball into the channels, moving the ball into key areas, which, which we, hurt, we hurt them. And this is, the, this is what I say time and time again. When you're playing against Omonia, if you try and play football against Omonia, you're more often than not, you're going to get punished. And credit to Doctor. Listen, I, I'm, I'm not even being patronising. Credit to them for trying to play football, for giving it a go. Because let's be honest, we, we do have our weaknesses. We saw last week against Olympia goes our weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And they'll probably think, okay, well, they're a little bit out of form. They might be a little bit tired. Let's, let's, let's give them a game. And credit to them for, for trying to do it because I'm sick and tired of seeing teams at home playing 10 men behind the ball. You know, granted, it's, it's a game about winning and getting points and on one of the best teams. So of course, a point at home is fantastic. Yeah. But I've got more respect for teams 
that want to come and play football. And they did, and we battered them, okay? All right. It, it, it was a game where we missed a few chances. I could see Ernest getting quite frustrated because yeah. he, he, he missed a couple of chances. He hit the outside of the post. So I think the, the goal that Shepard scored, I think Ernest shot. That's what I think. It looked like a shot to me. I'm not going to lie. You know, I, I was going to say the same thing. I, I watched the... I watched the replay a couple of times just to make sure. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to say that, man. I, I, I think maybe he tried to pass. The first impression was I, I thought he was trying to take a shot. But then. Because this is what we said last week against Olympia Goz, where you yeah. always put it across the goalkeeper. Yeah. And you can see he put his foot through it to shoot. But okay, listen, I'm, I'm not complaining. Shepard got in the end of it and he, he scored. And you almost missed as well. Gideon yeah. Shepovich, if you're watching. You <laughs> almost mean, but listen, he went in, and that, that's the main thing. But having said that, though, in all fairness to Ernest, right? Again, he was trying, man. He was trying, and what I love about him the most is that he, he doesn't let his head drop. He just yeah. carries on. Okay, I miss a chance. I'll try again. I'll try again. I'll try again. And this is what you need when you've got players that give up after the first or second miss. There's no point. But yeah. he carried on and he carried on, and that again, that, that, I think that's uh, that's the mental strength that we need. That's a mental strength that, that reverberates uh, across the rest of the team. Yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to say, you know, at the, uh, you know, at the end of the first half, you know, it was easy to, to say that Ernest was uh, the MVP the first 45 minutes because, you know, obviously the, the assist and all the chances. But I want to talk about Loizo as well. Loizo was amazing as well. Yeah. Uh, another great performance. You know, he's 17 years old. You know, he at the time when we needed, he, he, he pushed a little bit back. He, he played like an experienced player, you know. And, uh, you know, what, what made me, uh, what I liked most about him was at the end of the game when they interviewed him and he seemed again humble and he gave all the credit to his teammates. And he said, you know, I'm, I'm trying hard and uh, I've got my head down and I'm humble and, you know, I'm glad to uh, help the team and if, if it wasn't for my teammates, you know, he, he didn't take it, you know, at a personal level that it's very easy to do at this age, you know. Mm. And, uh, you know, the first goal he passed to, to Ernest and that was a lot more difficult what Loizo did than, you know, when Ernest passed to Chepa. And uh, Loizo and Ernest deserved to... They, they they caused all, all, all anything threatening we used to do was because of Loizo and and Ernest. Obviously, Berg said that it wasn't for if it wasn't for the rest of the team they they couldn't have been as uh, effective as they were. But you know, uh, all in all, I think they they had an excellent first half and uh, they they were really decisive. Uh, do you know, I, I think they complement each other in a very big way. And by that, I mean, when you look at, you know, Loizzo playing wide right, he's not very effective because effectively all he wants to do is bring the ball in on his left foot. Yeah. And when you're doing that, you're kind of making things a bit more difficult for your front men because it's, ask, it's asking your, your, your front men to basically occupy wide areas. So while you're moving inside, they're having to pull out wide. But when I see Loizzo playing in the hole as a number 10, I feel more comfortable and more confident when he's in the team in that position because I know that he can draw defenders out of position. He could draw a central, central defender out of position and let Ernest play off the other defender's shoulder. He creates space. And that, that's effectively what one of the main problems that we've had this season, especially in the final third. We've played against teams that are very compact, play very narrow, and it's very difficult to create those pockets of spaces where our yeah. front men can occupy. But when you've got someone like Loizzo there in the team, even Johnny's, uh, when he makes those diagonal runs, you're yeah. pulling defenders out of position. But then it's down to the front men to make those intelligent runs. And we saw that against Loxa with, with Ernest, playing off the central defender's shoulder in, in between the central yeah. defender and the fullback. He's saying, fine, I will occupy that, that space, but yeah. feed me, play me through. And more often than not, those balls in between the, the two defenders were, were spot on. Okay, the finishing wasn't great. And I'll reiterate, I still think he shot for the, for the first goal. But what he yeah. did right, what he did right, which is another thing that I will say about perhaps players in, in wide areas, 
when they receive the ball in wide areas, there's always this weird kind of, I don't know, I don't know if it's a fetish or something that they like doing, cross it high, looking for the, for the tall guy. Well, yeah. more often than not, if you drill the ball hard and low across the six-yard box, yeah. all it will take is a touch. It could be from yeah, a defender, and, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it goes in. Dangerous. We, I don't, we don't see that often enough, and I think we need to see that more because, don't get me wrong, Shepard looks good in the air, and more often than not, he might get his, his, his head on the end of it. I like to see balls drilled across the face of the goal because you're asking questions of the defenders and the goalkeeper. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, you know, I, I absolutely. I, I I agree with you. Uh, what you said. Uh, if if there's one thing I, I like to add is that you know, uh, uh, when Loizo plays on the wing and and even Babu Lis, uh, they're not as effective. I, I I'd like to see them play as a number ten, like you said earlier, because it's not just like physically. I think when you're playing on the wing, you need a lot more strength to 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 help your your right or left back but when you're playing as a number 10 you know and then pushing on the flanks or like pushing on the sides and then moving on is it's it's a lot more easier to to set the pace but when you have to run back like the game with Olympia go we didn't mention that last week Loizo and Babulis got tired really easily because they were playing on the flanks and they had to run back and one more thing we didn't we didn't uh, touch last time, and, and we played yesterday. Is that we played a uh, we had a change of formation. It's like more four four two, maybe not like a classic four four two, because of the size of the of, of the players as well. Because it was Chepa in you know in 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 the box, but you know uh, we're trying to approach these games with a different tactic, uh, tactically different as well to be try, try and be a bit uh, more. Um, uh, assertive, uh, but yeah, I I I think that uh, yesterday it worked, but uh, we have to bear in mind that Guslo was playing instead of Vitor, and that made a whole a lot of difference because physically we dominated. Obviously, Roxa doesn't have the physical players like Olympiagos had. Uh, and that helps us win the battle of the midfield. And when you win the battle of the midfield, more sure than not, more times than uh, not, you you're closer to to getting the victory. Because you know it's it's the midfield battle is is like the the brain. You're brain dead if you lose if you lose the midfield. You're like brain dead. So you might be good defending, or you might be okay attacking. But if 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 the Midfield is not working, then the ball won't reach the attackers, you know. So it's the midfield for me yesterday was uh, the battle we won, and that that that's what changed the game. And uh, Jordi was again back to what we're used to him, what we're used to him, like seeing from him. He he put in his experience, his skill. Obviously, Fortis came on second half and. Uh, you know, he finished them off, the experience. But yeah, you know, all all in all, I think you know it was a like I said earlier, it was a no nonsense. I mean, we can talk a, a little bit more, but you know, there's no point. Uh, it was a we went into the game, we wanted to win the game. We we won it. It could the score could have been four, five, six, you know. But at the end of the day, it was very important that we won. You know, three points in the bag momentarily top of the league uh, and we were up until one minute before the Abolong game ended when they equalised so we would have been uh, first on goal difference now we're one point behind but still you know uh, it was it was a very good performance really happy with the performance solid and uh, yeah, there's not there's, there's not much that I can say, you know. I don't I don't want to I don't want to be critical, you know. But well, there's I don't think there's anything to be critical about feeling. And, and the thing is, what what I was really pleased about yesterday um, was the tempo of our football. It wasn't just one touch passing, but the movement was then. If you look at the second goal, which was a uh, for this header. Yeah. When, when Jordi gets the ball from the from the free kick, he, he takes a quick free kick. Yeah. But while he takes it, just before he takes that free kick, Lesiak is calling for the ball. So yeah. he's pretty thought two steps ahead. Now, yeah. 
when you look at the goal again, you look at the, the defenders, they're all watching the ball. They're not looking at the man. And yeah. even when Lesiak gets the ball to, to whip it across the goal, Foddy has practically got enough time to make a gaffe and still get in behind, get, get in front of the, the central defender and get his head on the ball. And I think, again, that's, that's another thing that I stress so highly um, ever since I've started doing these podcasts that while the standard of defending in Cyprus has improved, the fundamentals are still, they're still getting them wrong. So be it ball watching. I see a lot of defenders in, in the league do that. At other yeah. teams, ball watching, just looking at the ball, not looking yeah. at the man. And it goes back to what I said about for this goal from Jordi getting the ball from a free kick. They're not set up properly. They're not looking at Lesiak. Lesiak is obviously our main threat from the wide area. They're not picking him up. When the ball goes over the top, the fullback is still looking at the ball. He, he notices Lesiak too late. And again, when Foddy makes that, that run into the box, that, uh, that ghost run, the central defender is too busy looking at the ball. He's not even looking at where the, where the striker is. So this is a fox, man. For this is a fox. He's he like... is, and it's experience, but this this is why we need players like him in the squad. You know, when we signed him, I thought, did we sign him to to keep up with the the, the homegrown quota, the the Cypriot player quota? But obviously, yeah. he's been signed because he brings that added experience to the squad. So when you're looking at the likes of Loizu, that's growing up, that's giving these interviews, saying, you know, this is a team effort. When you see the likes of Johnny's, who all right, he hasn't played much recently, but I think it's a good thing because we don't want him to burn out. Yeah. When you've got someone with the experience that's played in this league, and look, you know, Costa Gyaso is a good friend of mine and he knows yeah. uh, Fodi. He's known him for yeah. years. They, they, he, I think they might have played in off years. Well, I bravo. Career, bravo. Yeah. So he, he says to me, you know, Fodi has, has made a huge difference on and off the pitch. Yeah. Because he is a talker. He does offer his his help to the to the youngsters and, and everyone else. And, you know, he had a difficult start to the season. He had a, he, he came with an injury and he had a good game against uh, Gurtin FC and he got yeah. cramp and whatnot. But he's grown into, into the squad. And, you know, we, we need players like him. We need players like Jordi, obviously. And we need yeah. the experienced heads to... To, to give us that extra push. And I know I've been going on too much and I haven't, haven't really been speaking about the tempo, which is what I was originally discussing. But, you know, it's great to see that the ball being moved quicker. We didn't do that against Olympia Goz. Um, and, and again, I, I've, I've got no complaints, just like you, no complaints whatsoever. And I don't think anyone should have complaints about the victory. You know, we kept the clean sheet again. Yeah. So, eh, happy as Larry. Like a, like a pig in shit at the moment, isn't there? Let's see. <laughs> so who was your man of the match then? Uh, like like I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, uh, the, the first half it was between Loizo and Ernest. I think maybe Ernest um, deserved the to, to be, you know, the MVP of the first half. Obviously, the second half, uh, Fordis came on and he made the difference with the two goals, with his experience, with his placement. But like I mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think it was with Paralimni. Uh, I, I like it when I have to choose between two, three or four players. Because that means, I mean, I, I thought um, something we didn't mention. Uh, Lufner, he had, he had Sandik against him. Hey, put him in his pocket, man. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know what, I'm going to do another video, uh, what's it called, Photoshop. So there's, there's another oh. player he's got in his pocket, yeah? Efile, he, he He's just, running out of pockets. He's running Efile, out of pockets. That player had 11 goals, you know, and uh, it just, you know, it seemed like he was playing against like a 15-year-old a kid, you know. It was, uh, he, he, he just, Sandik got so frustrated. He couldn't do anything, man. He couldn't do anything so... For me, uh, Lufner was, was amazing at the back. Fabian obviously had the save, which was very important and uh, could have changed the history of the game if, uh, sh if that shot went in. And uh, Fodis and Loizo and Asante, but, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me who the MVP was. It, it just, you know, for me, it was a, a solid performance. All the players played uh, a very good tempo, a very good standard. They, they were patient. 
they had a <clears throat> no nonsense sort of approach to the game. They they didn't let Voxa at any point because with Olympiago last week we said okay the first 20 minutes were aggressive. We we tried to score an early goal, but after the 20th minute we we made them believe that they can get something out of the game. Yesterday Voxa there's no point that they believed it you know, that they can get something out of the game. And this is what I expect uh, when we play against uh, teams of, of that calibre, you know, because we've already missed, like, we lost, we've dropped 16 points to to teams like uh, Olympiago, Pafo, Salamina, Doxa, Hermes, Paralimni, and... Uh, yeah, but that, don't forget, that was, that was at a very difficult stage of the season for us. A lot was happening there, man, and Listen, I, I will say this till I'm blue in the face. The Europa League, as great of, uh, of an adventure it was, it, it, it played its part, man. It took its toll. Like, it took its toll when, you know, these, these things happen. But, you know, it, again, and I think we, we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. If it wasn't for the Europa League, we'd, we'd be clear by now. We'd be clear. It's that simple, man. Most, most probably, yes. Oh, most. Come on, man! Definitely, there's this. this yeah. if, if this Europa League campaign, while it's taught us lessons, the players' lessons, especially the younger ones, it's taught them lessons about uh, fatigue, about stamina, about tactics. So it's taught them a lot. The experience in, in general. I still believe that if it wasn't for the Europa League, we'd be clear by now. You know, I'm not complaining though. Don't get me wrong, because... Neither, neither am I. I'm just, no, I'm, I'm not complaining, because you're going to be watching the thing, oh, yeah, you know, you know, Harris does whatever, you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're ungrateful. No, it's, it's not. It's just that... It's fact. It's a fact. That being said, you're right. We've, we've dropped points this season. We've dropped points at places that perhaps you wouldn't expect us to drop points. But it goes back to what I said yesterday. We won our game... The onus was on Abolon today to win. They didn't. They needed a seventh minute injury time equaliser. It was more like play until Abolon score, right? But they had the one job to do to win and they didn't. And this is what I'm saying about pressure. And I said it in my Instagram video. There are Grabiedes now. Yeah. They're, they're breaking, they're crumbling. Grabiedes, yeah. right? And this is what it's going to be like. So if we win on Tuesday, which I'm kind of expecting, when are the other lot playing again? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But they're probably playing the next day because they won't be playing the same day, will they? No, they're not. But yeah. That, yeah. yeah so we win that. We go two points clear at the top and then it's back to them again. And there. Yeah. But the, That's what I'm talking about, man. But, you know, it's what we're saying that we, we should take advantage of the... You know, you got you got Salamina, and then you got Hermes, and then and then you got Abuel. So you should get at least seven points out of these games, so you can step into the. They've got Ayek on Tuesday. My yeah, apologies. and there's Apollon Ael as well. So yeah, yeah, Apollon have got Ayek. Yeah, they got Ayek on Tuesday. Yeah. So yeah. okay, I mean. Like I said, I'm not complaining. This is a league where all the teams lose points. Uh, there's a lot of teams in the top four. You know, uh, it's very tight. So, okay. I mean, and what you said about the European games, may maybe it's cost us uh, with teams of a lower caliber, like it did, but I think it also helped us win the derbies as well. 100%. 100%. So the, the mentality and, and uh, the approach to these games, which, you know, Omonia was struggling in, in you know, the past years, uh, playing in Europe in, in that level help, helped us win. So, yeah, on the one hand, maybe we had a diff difficulty of, a, of adapting in a different style of play with teams that played us very defensively with a lot of men behind the ball, like 10 men behind the ball and all of that. But on the, uh, on the other hand, I think it helps us beat teams like uh, Aele and Anorthosi and Abolon and Abuel. You know, if it wasn't for, for the European games, maybe, okay, so may, maybe we would have lost points there and won the, the other games. But, you know, all, all in all, we're not complaining and going back to the game. Uh, three points, uh, uh, a win that, you know, uh, no nonsense win one, one more time. Uh, we didn't let Doxa 
even consider the fact that they can get something out of the game. And we're continuing. We've got the game with Salamina. Obviously, they lost the game today, so I'm expecting them to be a little bit more, you know, dangerous because it's always a little bit more dangerous when a team comes after a loss. But, you know, we have to be physically and mentally prepared to get the three points and take advantage of the games that are going to be played with the, with the other title contenders. So maybe hopefully next week we're going to be top of the league and stay there, you know. And uh, so that's the thing, man. Um, I think, yeah. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, there's just one more thing, actually, um, yeah. which we didn't really discuss. In fact, we did. We, we discussed transfers, but obviously last week, there was the last few days of the transfer window. Now it's done. Yeah. We signed the Kasper Choratska, yeah. the goalkeeper from, from uh, the Wisla Krakow. Yeah. I don't know too much about him, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to pretend I know. Um, I've, I've tried to do some digging, but again, people that I know, Polish football experts, they're still like, who? Um, but we've seen a lot of quality goalkeepers come out of Poland, so hopefully he'll, he'll come good. But the thing is, I'm interested to see where he's going to fit in because... You know, we, we spoke about goalkeepers last week and yeah. there's this big rumour about Ajax Athens being interested in yeah, Fabiano. Fabiano. But we, we knew that was always going to happen. Yeah. The, the teams were eventually, gonna eventually it was going to happen, whether it was Ajax or any other team. Yeah, Of course. Um, I don't think Cholazza is going to be number one next season. I'll be very surprised <laughs> if he's in, even at the school. See, I think he'll be loaned out, personally. I think he'll go out on loan to get some experience. Um it's- but but it's a year and a half. I think his contract's for a year and a half. If I'm oh, is he? All right. I think it's till the end of this season and, and the next. So oh, wow, okay, that's interesting. That's uh, interesting. So yeah, okay. Uh, like I mentioned last time, I think uh, Kiriagidis is not ready. So I don't think Kiriagidis is gonna have any first team football till the end of the season. So it's up to Costandino Panayi, and uh, so it's obviously Fabiano Panayi, and then. The Polish keeper comes in, you know, the rank third, I think. I I did mention something about, you know, the necessity of having a, a, another keeper because it would have been unfair if, God forbid, something happened to Fabiano, if Costandino came on. Obviously, okay, he's waiting for his chance as well. But, you know, um, a goalkeeper, when, when he's not been in full fitness and he's suffered so many injuries and in two years he's had, like, three or four, you know, appearances. And as we're getting at the end of the season, the pressure is on. So any mistake, like we said, you know, uh, the weight on his shoulder is, uh, on his shoulders is going to be a lot. But, you know, you are going to have to have the balls, like you, you say a lot of times. But, yeah, I, I expected maybe um, a keeper a little bit more, more experience because I, I – like I spoke, like when, when when we spoke with Sofiane earlier, and we were talking about the Guinea and and uh, the dependence some other teams have, uh, some players like Vilitalia or the Guinea or Sandik. We have a dependence on Fabiano. I think more than any other player in the pitch. Like if Omonia without Fabiano is a completely different team, and. Uh, Let's just hope and wish that, you know, he stays fit and he's in top form for another, you know, 13, 14 games because he's vital. For me, he's the MVP of the season this far, man, uh, Fabiano. Uh, all levels in Europe and in, in the Super he, League. He, he's been brilliant. He's been absolutely he's brilliant. phenomenal. You know, and um, yeah. you know, I was I was a bit mm, when we signed him. I was thinking he was at he was at Fenerbahce. Didn't really do too much at Porto. I wasn't too sure about him. But hey, listen, you know, he's he's been absolutely phenomenal this season. But I think we need to face facts that one day he's going to go. And if if he is to go in the summer, um, I don't know who we can replace him with. No, well, I I do know who we can replace him with. Um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say so, but. Um, I, I know who he is. Okay. Um, there's someone that, that I know would, wouldn't would mind. In fact, I think he would like to come to the club. Um, and he has, has play, he hasn't played for his national team, but he's called up to, he's been called up to squads. Um, he's not first choice at his club at the moment. He's actually on loan to another club in the domestic league. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure that Henningberg knows him. Um, but yeah, and I'll tell you his name afterwards, but I'm not going to do it right now. But yeah, is, if, if, is that is like that your personal opinion or is something you know? No, it's, it's my personal opinion. It's okay. my personal opinion. I, I, I know that he would he would love to come to Omonia. I know he would. Um, okay. Because I've spoken to him. <laughs> but, um, you know, yeah, I, I think he, this, this guy that I'm going to mention to you after, after I've stopped recording, he, I think he'd be the perfect... Um, the perfect replacement for okay. Fabiano, you know. Okay, fair enough. He's he's not as tall as Fabiano, and I, I think he's uh, I think his shot stopping is is probably at the same level, but I think his distribution is better. Um, I think his kicking is better. Um, but hey, listen, I'm I'm, I'm just uh, being yeah. I mean, don't don't forget happy. that Fabiano's got another uh, another couple of years contract with Omonia, so. You know, whichever uh, team is interested, they're going well, to have... How old is he now, then, Roy? How old is he now? He's 32, man. 32, yeah? So he's, he's still young for a goalkeeper. Yeah. And, you know, uh, whoever wants to come in, he's going to have to pay a hefty hefty fee, man. Cause... You're probably looking about two, three million, right? If not more. Uh, I don't think so, man. No? no? Not in Cyprus, not, not Omonia at this stage. And it's... Well, I don't know. For a goalkeeper that's done well in the Europa League... Two million? Oh, does that does that sound unreasonable? If Zalai went for two million, come on, how much is Fabiano going to go for? Uh, I I wasn't even thinking millions, man. I, I was really. Thinking, I was thinking more in thousands, but ah, man, come on. May, but yeah, hey, you even like a half a million or six hundred or seven hundred thousand for a goalkeeper that plays in the Cypriot League, man. Um, but I don't know, and, and, and especially if we're talking about Ike, Ike's not got the money, man. Ike's not going to, like, because even, like, um, reporters close to to Ike said that, you know, uh, maybe Fabiano would have been a good choice for Ike uh, in the January window. But, you know, in the summer, there's going to be a lot of other goalkeepers we can, you know, there's a bigger pool of goalkeepers we can find. So, you know, uh, okay. So Fabiano's also at an age where okay he still he still has a few years of goalkeeping, but maybe he can you know decide that you know uh, I'm good at Ammonia I'm playing European level I'm getting paid I enjoy my my life in Cyprus. He's got his aloha, hasn't he? <laughs> he's got his aloha. Yeah, aloha, yeah. And uh, hey, he's enjoying his time so. You know, may, maybe, you know, may, maybe if, if he's not, you know, ambitious in the sense that, you know, he wants uh, another ch- shot in his career for something better. Maybe, he's, you know, he's content at playing at this level and he's playing European games and he's getting paid, you know, on time and he's in an environment where he's satisfied and he's happy. So I don't know. We're going we're gonna to have to wait and see. But OK, um, it's always good to keep our eyes open because uh, uh, a good team always starts from a good keeper. And Omonia suffered in that position for many years. Maybe not necessarily because the keepers we had weren't as good, but it was just the defensive mentality was so poor that, you know, at the end of the day, the keeper always pays for the mistakes that, you know, uh, the rest of the team because this is the last line so it's always the key- you're going to point your finger at the, at the keeper and you know oh, Fabiano has been amazing and uh, I'm not going to lie at the beginning of the of the season I was gutted to see Uzoho go because I, I thought that Francis was very good and maybe some people are not going to be very happy about what I'm saying but you know I thought that if I had to push my money on someone, I, I would have put my my money on Zoho. The though- thing is, you, you can you can see now, with the greatest respect to him, you can see now yeah. why the club didn't take that gamble on him because of his, his injury problems. That knee injury that he got has, has effectively fucked him big time, man. Like, yeah, it, but, but you know, I do stand corrected. Like even what you said, you know, uh, his CV wasn't very impressive at the beginning, but but for me now, I mean. In my mind, he's the best keeper in the island for sure, and one of the best, uh, uh, one of the best in Omonia's history, and one of the best that ever played the position in Cyprus. Because there have been some very good goalkeepers, and even this year, 
what makes Fabiano even, uh, you know, what makes the fact that Fabiano is, is the best keeper of the island even more important is that this year we have some very good goalkeepers, in, like uh, even the keeper of Doxa. And uh, there's uh, Mol and there's Dimitriou and there's um, uh, the, the guy in Paphos, the uh, Ukrainian, I think. In yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's some very good goalkeepers and there's, you know, some uh, players like, um, what's his name? Salamina's keeper, Veselovsky and... Uh, uh, even Achna, I mean, teams that have conceded goals, they have good goalkeepers, but to see, you know, F Fabiano is, is better. Loria, Loria of Anorthos is a very good goalkeeper. But, you know, I think, I think Fabiano is a... I don't rate that Vozinha, though. I think he's terrible. You think he's, so? I think, I, I terrible, think he's terrible, man. Terrible. Terrible, terrible is a, a, it's a bit hard. Nah, man, he's terrible. Like, he's, you know, he's, he's one of these goalkeepers he, where he wants to be an outfield player. You know, he wants to be an outfield player. I don't, I don't rate him personally. But again, you know, my, my favourite ever goalkeeper is Peter Schmeichel. So I'm putting up levels <laughs> here, you know. <laughs> That's it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. So I, th I think we've got the game covered and, and we had a bit of a chat about the goalkeeper. So let's keep it short and sweet this time. So Bomba. There you go. That's we've it. done it. We've done it. I think we've done it in less than 45 minutes. Okay. So yeah, bravo there. Congratulations, congratulations. Right there, right. One more thing. Uh, Instagram. What's your Instagram? It's Roy Nochoff is my new Instagram. Please follow my new Instagram account. It's Roy Nochoff Des. And show us some love, show us some support, you know. And my boy at Chesto still, at Chesto, you know, and the OLB channel. Please subscribe. You know, uh, it's something new to us and uh, all the support is uh, more than welcome and we will appreciate your love and support. Absolutely. We have 199 subscribers. Amodo. We need one more for 200. Oh, so one more, one more. One more for 200. The thing is, I, I think we need to do a competition sometime soon. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah why not, man? And a competition. Maybe a, a, a few surprises as yeah. well. But yeah, so. it's something we can talk about, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. So that I think that's that's next on the agenda. We're going to think of a competition to run for the subscribers because the only way that they're going to find out about the competition is by subscribing and watching the videos, isn't it? That's it. That's right. It. There you go. We'll do a competition, and um, we'll think of a, a. Shall we do like a question? Shall we do? I don't know. How shall we do it? We'll de we'll decide. We'll yeah. de you and I will decide uh, 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 after after the cameras are off. Okay, no problem, no problem. That's all right. Well, that's it. We we'll leave we we'll leave them on a cliffhanger. Yeah, hanging on, hanging on for dear life. Head on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, at Roy No Chuff, there's at Shaystel. Follow the OLB. Also the Omonia Troll. I love that bloody uh, account. Yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah the, those right? guys are good, man. Get a doom Omonia Troll. Yeah, you go in the Omonia Football Town. The yeah, the Omonia Football our, Town. Our, our thumbnail is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah. And that's it. Yeah, so hit that subscribe button, like, tell your nunna. nunna. Until next time, <laughs> right? Go and say it. Ete Omonia Shilaka Pamen Omonia Laos Prodaslima.